الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise belongs to Allah, the nurturing Lord of all that exist. وَالْعَاقِبَةُ للمتقين. And the final outcome will be in favor of the people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well. وَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَا عَنَ الظَّالِمِينَ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the rank and grant peace and security to our Prophet Muhammad and upon all of his family and all of his companions and all of his followers until the day of judgment. وَسَلَّمَ تَسْلِيمًا كَثِيرًا أَمَّا بَعَدُوا And to begin with our class for today, pertaining good character, and how to have proper manners with a person that is most deserving of good treatment from you, who is your parent, that person who قدمك على نفسي That person who put you in front of their self And this is something that is specific for the parent Because every person is in competition with every other person to be as good as they can be, to do as much good as possible. And no person really wants to see you be better than them. Except for your parent. Except for your parent. Your parent, as a rule, they love you and they are concerned about you. And they sacrifice for you. And they put you in front of their self. Your parents, they buy you clothes when they can't afford to buy themselves clothes. Your parents make sure that you can eat well even if it makes sure, or even if it means that they can't buy the things that they need to buy or would like to buy for themselves. Your parent, they put you in front of their self from the time that you were born. And for this reason, and for this reason, your parent has an enormous right. And so your parent has a right that you love them and respect them and that you do everything that is possible to bring happiness to their heart. The Prophet وسلم, he said, خَيْرُ النَّاسَ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ وَأَحَبُّ الْعَمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمْ أي تُدْخِلُهُ فِي قَلْبِ مُسْلِمْ That the best people are those that are most beneficial for other people. The best people are those that are, more that are most beneficial to other people. That do the most to benefit other people. And the most loved action to Allah is to bring happiness to the heart of a Muslim. And so the person who deserves that you benefit them more than any other person is your parent. And the person that deserves that you bring happiness to their heart more than any other person is your parent. And so everything from the manners that we're reviewing here are connected to how to bring happiness to the heart of the parent and how to cause your parent to love you because love is something that is earned. 
And the amount of love that your parent has is something that is earned. And love, as one of the scholars of the past, Abu Hassan al Mawridi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said there are two things that exist between the parent and the child. And they are al mahabbatu wa shafaqa, love and concern, or love and compassion. He said, love is something that can be lost. A child can do things to cause a parent to dislike them, or to cause a parent to lose love for them. But no matter what the child does, usually, the parent always has the second thing, which is a shafaqa. The parent is always worried about their child, concerned about their child. And so love is something that is earned. If a person wants the love and the adoration of their parent, for their parent to be happy at their presence, and for them not to be mustathqal, and somebody that the parents find to be a nuisance, and to be annoyed by their presence, then they have to use the best manners that are possible. So we mentioned some of these things last week, and we continue with the the sixth thing. Shaykh Fawaz al Madkhali he says, Al Madhu wal Ishada tu daima tu lahum. Is that a person should always praise their parents and speak as good about their parents as possible to other people. So a person shouldn't complain about their parents to other people. That's from poor manners. That's from disrespect of the parent. And a person shouldn't criticize their parent to their face, and definitely they shouldn't criticize their parent behind their back, who is more terrible than a person who backbites their parent. Or rather they should praise their parent, speak well about their parent in front of them and to other people. Should always talk about everything that they love and like about their parents. To the point that it's from good manners that a person even praises the handwriting of another person. And this is in general, this is good manners. When you see somebody has good handwriting, you should say something about that. Say, Allah Mubarak, Allah bless it for you. Allah has blessed you with good handwriting. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And something as small as that, a person should mention. So you find things that are true to say about your parents and you praise them to their faces. You tell your father, you tell your mother how intelligent they are. Everybody likes to be complimented. There are very few people on the earth that don't like a compliment and are encouraged by compliments. And so a person should compliment their parents, praise their parents to their face and and when they are speaking to other people about their parents, mention good things about their parents. The next thing, مُشَارَكَتُهُمْ الْأَخْبَارَ الْمُفْرِحَةِ should share happy news with their parents. You shouldn't bring sad news to your parents. Always tell your parents about every sad thing that you saw or heard about or so on and so forth. The person should give happy news to their parents, tell their parents about happy, any good things that they heard about or saw. From good treatment of the parents is عَدْمُ النَّقْلِ الْأَخْبَارِ السَّلْبِيَةِ لَهُمْ What we just mentioned, that you don't give bad news to your parents. You don't give bad news to your parents. And as soon as something negative happens, and this is something that a person has to wean their self away from, because it's the normal habit of a person when they're a child is that as soon as anything happens that upsets them, the first thing they do is they go crying to their mother. They go crying to their mother. As a person grows older and they mature, then they must do that less and less. Make sure that they're not always running to their mother, running to their father, sharing bad news with them, telling them about everything that upsets them, so on and so forth. 
the ninth thing athanao ala asliqaihim wa man yuhibbun is that a person should speak well about their parents friends and those people that their parents love so a person doesn't complain about their parents friends and he sometimes children especially in these times when people carpool and the likes of these things and you have parents that help each other to get their kids to school and the children they may see something from the friend of their parent who was helping the parent out or watching them or babysitting them or things like that that aggravate them or upset them they don't like what somebody said to them they don't like what somebody did to them so on and so forth and he, somebody may have corrected them or disciplined them or scolded them or yelled at them or so on and so forth and you go back to your parent and you talk bad about their friend to their face that's something terrible it's from bad manners a person should always make excuses for their parents friends and not say bad things about their parents friends and so on and so forth and they should speak well about those that their parents love so if there are certain scholars, for example, or certain teachers, or du'at, that your parents love, and to speak well about those people in the presence of your parents, because this is something that brings happiness to the heart of the parent. Brings happiness to the heart of the parent that you speak well about their friends. Because when you speak well about their friends, then in a roundabout way, you're complimenting your parents' choice of friends. Right? An adult isn't like a child and who they choose to be their friend. They choose to be their friend, somebody who is similar to them, somebody who is like them, right? And so they choose to be their friend, somebody who has good qualities, good traits, things that they like that are similar to themselves. And so when you're criticizing your parents' friends, then it's like criticizing your parents and it's like insulting your parents and saying that your parents have a bad choice in friends. So this is from mistreatment of the parents. The tenth thing, التذكير الدائم بإنجازاتهم التذكير الدائم بإنجازاتهم So that you constantly remind them about their accomplishments. You, can't, you constantly remind your parents about all their, all their accomplishments. And so you don't talk about bad memories to your parents. You don't talk about the bad haircut that your mother gave you 10 years ago. You know, you don't talk about, you know, painful memories, any things that happened in the past that upset you or made you sad. But you talk about the accomplishments of your parents and remind them of their accomplishments because parents always feel that they haven't done enough when it comes to their kids. They always feel that they failed to some level when it comes to their kids and they're disappointed with themselves. So it's encouraging, it's encouraging, especially the older you get, the more grown you become, and that you remind your parents of all the good things that you learned from them, how your parents taught you good manners and good character, how your parents kept you away from things that were harmful, how your parents corrected you, and they showed love by correcting you and being hard on you in a way that would Make sure that you didn't go down the wrong path and do the wrong things. So you remind your parents and you, their, about their accomplishments in raising you and disciplining you and teaching you manners. You remind your parents and he, about how the money that they spent for you to learn the Quran and for you to have Muslim teachers and so on and so forth benefited you a great deal and this is something that they will get a reward for with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you should think about these sorts of things and this brings about a person having a correct mentality and how they think about their parents and it says of a person being resentful a person being ungrateful and finding reasons to be angry with their parent that they think about all the good things that their parent has done for them this is from gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gratitude towards the parents. The eleventh thing he says 
is that you show some interest and some interaction in their conversation, even if hatta law takarrara minhum. And this is something that as adults get older, we do, we repeat ourselves a lot. We tell the same stories over and over and over again. And when a prison goes to visit their grandparents, they hear the same story over and over and over again. You should interact with the story. You should, be, you should show that you're interested in what they're talking about, even if you've heard the story a hundred times before. You should interact with the conversation. You should never act like you're bored or bothered that they're talking about the same thing again. Oh, you're going to tell us the story again. You should be interested in what your parents have to say, even if it's a story that you've heard before or something that they've told you before. The twelfth thing is something that we already mentioned, is that you don't bring up painful situations and memories from the past. You don't mention any sad, painful things to your parents, to the best of your ability. And sometimes the only person we have to talk to is our parent about such things. And sometimes a person may be sad or troubled because they're thinking about a family member, for example, that passed away, a sibling or a parent that passed away, so on and so forth. And the only person you really have to talk to about that is your parent. But to the best of your ability, any painful things, sad memories, so on and so forth, you should try our best not to uh, mention these sorts of things to our parents. The thirteenth thing, we're going to go up to fifteen today. تَجَنُّبُ الْأَحَدِيثَ الْجَانِبِيَّةِ is that while the parents are talking, that you're not having side conversations. If your parents are talking and you're in a gathering and a sitting with your parents, as people sit today, you have a furniture set, and you have the dad has a chair, the dad chair, and he's sitting in his dad chair, and the mother, she's sitting there having a conversation with the father. And if you were a part of the conversation at some point, because a lot of times your parents don't really want you in their conversation like that. But if you were part of the conversation to begin with, it's rude to just start a side conversation. Start a side conversation with somebody who's visiting or a side conversation with uh, one of your brothers or sisters or something like that. You should try to avoid having side conversations in their presence. The fourteenth thing, الجلوس باحترام معهم, is that you sit in a respectable way in front of your parents. When you're with your parents, that you sit in a respectable way. When I was growing up, my mother told me not to have bad posture, not to slouch when I sit. So I learned to sit up straight when I was a child. And it was something that always amazed me to see children sitting with their parents like this, like their body just fell asleep, like a person has what's called body language. So if a person is sitting like this in front of their parents, they're giving a certain message, right? You're scowling, you won't look at your parents, your arms are folded, you're sending a certain signal to your parents that you're upset or that you're bothered or so on and so forth. And if a person is counting the ceiling tiles and keeps sighing, that is a sign of boredom. That you're bored with being in the company of your parents. The general etiquette is that when you're sitting with people, that you don't لا تنصرف حتى تستأذن كما ورد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في حديث ثابت. So authentically reported from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that when you're sitting with anyone, anyone that you don't get up to leave from the sitting until you make istaadhan, you say istaadhinukum. Is it okay if I leave? It's from the etiquettes of sitting with people, right? So that's how you're supposed to be with somebody that's your own age when you're sitting down talking to somebody. You let somebody know, I have to leave, I'll see you tomorrow, so on and so forth. You seek permission to leave. So how much more so when you're with your parents and you're sitting looking bored and you don't want to hear what they're saying and they're telling you something about something that you didn't do, some chores, some responsibilities, 
that you were supposed to do. And you look bored the whole time. And you look upset and you look frustrated, so on and so forth. You keep sighing and these sorts of things. And then you just walk away when they're done talking. And these are from uh, bad manners with the parents. These are things that are bad manners with the parents. And bad manners with the parents is something that's hated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person should sit respectably in front of the parents. In many Muslim countries, probably most of the Muslim world, it is considered very, very disrespectful to do what with your feet? To point your feet towards your elders or towards your parents. To point your feet towards your elders or towards your parents. And even if that's not your culture, if you were to do that in front of people that are from other countries, and they see you do that in front of your parents, or see you do that in front of your elders, then they'll think that you're a disrespectful person. I think that you're a disrespectful person. So even if it's not your culture, to say it's not from disrespect to point my feet at my elders or to point my feet towards my parents, you should still get in the habit of not doing it. You should still get in the habit of not doing it because in many, many places in the Muslim world, probably most places in the Muslim world, if people see you do that, they'll think that you weren't raised with manners. And so there's two harms in that, right? One is that they'll think less of you and two they'll think less of your parents they'll think that your parents didn't raise you with manners so a person should be mindful about how they sit when they're in the company of other people and that they sit in a way that's respectable and the 15th thing and we'll conclude with this is عدم التقليل والانتقاص من أفكارهم. So not belittle their opinions or their ideas. And when your parent has an idea, if they want to do something, they want to take a family trip, and if they want to do something, and he go to somebody's house, visit a friend, these sorts of things, and if they have an idea of what they want you to do academically, and something that they want you to do to improve your education, whatever type of idea you can imagine that your parent has, you should never belittle their ideas. You should never belittle their ideas and act like their ideas are stupid or their ideas are unimportant. Now, so these are 10 things. We've covered 10 things a day, and we'll leave the... Uh, Leave the uh, projector running for a few minutes. We'll take about a five, ten minute break, inshallah, before our class on the stories of the Prophets. Barakallahu feekum hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam. Wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa